Now here's the real kicker. This is a 49 million year old fossil of a monkey's hand. Now according to the experts, Ida was 47 million years old. And here we have a 49 million year old monkey's hand. The problem is, the monkey hand was found in the same pit, people. The monkey hand was found in the same pit. The monkey hand is 49 million years old. Ida, 47 million years old, but they're found in the same pit. In the same pit. In the same pit. They're all dying at the same time. So, Gira, you're saying that two animals can't die in the same place unless they both died at the same time? That one animal can't drown in a lake two million years after something else drowned in the same lake? Why not? You seem to be trying very hard not to learn what I'm trying to teach you. Remember my earlier reply to you when I said this? The first time I presented this cladogram just a couple months ago, every other branch of the primate family tree was filled in by various no longer missing links, all except one a species with characters intermediate between haplorhines, the dry-nosed primates like ourselves, and strepsorhini, being lemurs and lorises and other wet-nosed primates. Did you notice this time that I said a species with characters intermediate between haplorhines and strepsorhines? Now, as I explained in my video on the ninth foundational falsehood of creationism, but in order to determine for certain whether anything does or doesn't meet the requirements, we have to know what those requirements are. And there is one creationist website brazen enough to post a definition of transitional species, which is also correct according to evolutionary biologists. So at least we can verify there is a common set of criteria both groups can agree upon. Now, this is the most precise and restrictive definition, Gear Up, and if you'll notice, a transitional fossil is determined by its characters, physical traits, and not necessarily its chronological placement. Why is that? Well, for example, we know that Pekingese dogs were bred by the Chinese Empress Tu Shi a couple hundred years ago. And we know through genetic tests that the Chow Chow is one of the oldest breeds, and that all domestic dogs were derived from Asiatic wolves better than 10,000 years ago. Yet it is still possible to find all three of these living at the same place at the same time. So while it may be ideal to find a basal template preceding all subsequent derivatives, it doesn't always have to be. Now, if we found fully derived lemurs living in the Cretaceous, that might present a quandary. And if we found monkeys in the Triassic, that'd jack everything up. But what we have, and you should have looked this up, are monkey-like lemuroids and what your own source describes as lemur-like anthropoids, both obviously closely related in morphology and both hailing from the same geologic period. Incidentally, Ida was not supposed to be the mother of all primates either, as there is another dating back to the dawn of the Eocene. It is also curious that your source lists only four primates ever having come from the Messel Pit, and that all of them are described on another page as primitive lemuroids. There's not one monkey listed. In fact, your source even says that the Messel Pit was formed 47 million years ago, and that it should contain no fossils older than that, at least not from the same natural resin which indicates the unusual chemical characteristics of that area. So your 49 million year old monkey's hand apparently came from a lemur rather than a monkey. Could it be that whoever wrote this wasn't sure what a monkey is? Since Wikipedia can be, and often is, modified by amateurs and laymen, it might be that this is only a typo. Because according to other more reliable sources, the earliest actual anthropoid is 7 million years younger than Ida, and the earliest primate ever is 11 million years older. She is a direct relative of man. It's supposed to be, according to the experts, she's a direct link to man. No, and I explained this too, don't you remember? Ida is a link between apes and other monkeys like us and another primate subset known as prosimians. Sky News, who reported all this, has revealed themselves as tabloid journalists. It is highly inappropriate sensationalism, and the way it's described is very misleading to anybody that doesn't understand taxonomy very well, and almost nobody does. Let's compare Ida's foot to Ida's foot to human foot and other vertebrates, like the himity hobbity have an arotoconidid that is not a primate. And what about the ancient hynapsips and the abodihibitis? And what about a couple of Cretaceous squamates and a cadibidius? Consider the Pliocene hominy. What do you... Pleistocene ungulates, what about them?
Bush. Now we're comparing Ida and Ida to the human feet and the status of the them fish. What is he saying? That's the part that's like, my mind wants to make sense of craziness. <laughs> you can't make sense of craziness. That's why nothing you say makes any sense. Taxonomy is complicated, but it isn't crazy. Even though the system was devised by a Christian scientist who believed in creationism and never knew anything about evolution because he lived a hundred years or so before Darwin. What is crazy is when Ma and Pa clueless are so amazingly arrogant that they think they know better than all the best educated expert specialists anywhere ever. And here we have a resin preserved boa constrictor. I mean, this is a snake which is exactly the same snake skeleton we have today. That's not surprising. Many snakes alive today may be very different species, but their skeletons could be exactly the same. Although we know they're very different species and cannot interbreed, there are whole lines in which their skeletons will appear identical. If you look at a snake's skeleton today, and you look at this mesal pit fossil, you will find that they are exactly the same. There is no difference. There's no little tootsies, no feet. Really? Must be a female boa then, because modern boas are dimorphic. The males still retain not only the vestigial remnants of their legs, now reduced only to single claws, but they still have the last vestiges of their pelvis, too. Say, how do you explain that, gear up? Oh, yes, I forgot. You ignore it, and then make fun of me for bringing up evidence you can't account for. I've also sold the tiny tootsies of the Hastiophysis terrasanctus which is a Mesozoic snake, which is, looks like the modern snake, but we like to call it a different species because we know it's not the same. It's got to have evolved a little bit. Yeah, the legs are a dead giveaway, especially since there's not one modern snake that still has fully developed feet and five little toes. And if anything did, why would it only have two of them? Just one more thing evolution explains, and creationism has to ignore as if it wasn't really there. No, 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 I don't want to hear anything. I hear nothing. You see, Gear Up, to me, accuracy matters. So does accountability. If I make a mistake, I'll admit it, and I'll correct it. But that's not your way. I can follow wherever the evidence leads, but you have a doctrinal obligation to defend the baseless assumptions of your initial conclusion with no evidentiary support at all. No matter how obvious, you're not permitted to concede any error ever, even when you know you're wrong. That's what makes your position so dishonest. Consequently, you and I have very different styles. If you ask me a direct question, I'll answer it. If you make a point, I'll address it appropriately and can either correct or concede it accordingly. I won't ignore it or obfuscate it by trying to change the subject. I have more credibility than that. Why would I want to believe something that isn't evidently true? So I won't speculate either. I'll consider any possibility where you will not. And I won't commit to anything I can't adequately defend or that isn't positively indicated. But that's all you do. So if you want to talk about whether there are definitely transitional species or beneficial mutations, whether macroevolution can ever be directly observed, or whether ribonucleotides could ever spontaneously assemble themselves, I can cite rigid definitions, verify they're accurate, and show you peer-reviewed experiments proving that each of these are evidently true, where you cannot defend any of your own assertions in any way at all. And if you want to contest me on any of these points, or try to project your own faults onto me and call me a liar or pretend that evolution is a religion, I can also prove that you're full of shit. <laughs>